Once you have downloaded Zotero and added a couple of items, ideally with an attachment PDF file in one of those items, you can then highlight any of the words, you can add an image around any of the blocks or any images inside the PDF and maybe add some different colors to those highlights. Then when you're inside of Obsidian, you can push your hotkey setup, which will bring up a Zotero search box for you to look through your Zotero for the paper you're looking for. And once you've selected it, you can push enter. And assuming your setup was correct, it's added the image to an image folder. This is the image that it's taken. And then I have a note with links going back to Zotero. So if I was to click on page one, it opens me up to Zotero exactly where that highlight was. And PDFs aren't just for academic articles. You can find any blog or web page online print. The hotkey for most browsers is control P or command P. You could also find it in the options menu at the top right of your browser in the three dots. Save as PDF. Then by using the Zotero Clipper, you can create an item inside of, in this case, my library, the main folder. So now I have an online article or web page that's been saved locally on my PC as a PDF. So if the article is taken down for whatever reason, I have a copy and I can highlight this. I can add images, boxes around all of the images and all of the images, all of the highlights will be exported just like an academic article to Obsidian through Zotero integrations. Before you can use the Zotero integrations plugin inside of Obsidian, you need to install the Better Bib Text for Zotero add-on in Zotero. I'm going to click on Latest Release. Click on the XPI file. Just move my face so you can see it's downloaded the XPI file. Back inside of Zotero, I go to Tools, Add-ons, and then you can drag the Better Bib Text for Zotero file from your documents, your download folder, or wherever it's gone. You can drag it into this add-ons window, and then it will ask you to restart Zotero, and then you can activate this add-on. Then when you're inside of Obsidian, go to Settings, Community Plugins, and turn on Community Plugins if they're turned off. Browse. Look for the Zotero Integration Plugin. Install. Then Enable. Then you can click on Options or go to the Settings panel inside of the Community Plugins section. Here you will need to download the PDF utility and what that basically does is allow the PDFs to be read. You'll then want to select a note import location, whatever folder that is. In this case, I'm going to leave it as the root folder so you can see everything that happens. I personally enable annotation concatenation and what that means is when you import the same file again, it will then update the highlights. For the majority of use cases, you won't need a citation format, but if you're in academia, you may want a citation format. I personally use Pandoc in exports, but that's a different conversation. So what we want to do is add import format. You can name it if you want, but I personally use a hotkey, so I never remember the name of my import format. Then choose the output path for this specific import. So this is import one. You can have multiple imports, and this is just the default import setting. So in this case, I still want it to be in my root folder, but I'm going to call it the site key of the Zotero item. And when you go into Zotero, if you click on an item, it will bring up the info tab in the right panel. And at the top, you can see the citation key. And this citation key is what's going to be referenced as the name of the file when it's imported into Obsidian. For the image output part, you could do the same thing. What I personally do, because images are slightly different, is put them in a folder. So I've typed in images, and what that means is it's going to put any image into an images folder, but at the moment you can see I don't have one, so this will automatically create it if it's not there. I don't change the image base name, I just leave it as image. And adding a template file is where a lot of people may get confused with this because there are so many different variations of templates and it does look a little bit codey when you want to add certain annotations into a file. So what I'm going to do is add the template I have in this vault and leave a link to my starter vault which includes this Zotero template in the description if you want to use my template. I don't use a bibliography style because I'm not citing anything. And then to keep things easy, I just leave everything else as default. If we have a quick look at the template file, this is the file you'll download. Now, this is my formatting. Obviously, yours is going to be slightly different, but I have the date. So that's the date information from the Zotero item. And I format it in the year because I only want the year it was published. I personally then add a tag called note source to all of my articles that I import from Zotero. They could be articles or videos or blogs or podcasts or anything that goes into Zotero. For me, I use Zotero instead of Readwise. I then have an authors section. And the reason I have directors in here is because when I clip a video, the creators of the video are directors, not authors. So I have directors. So if it's a video import, it will put the name of the creator inside of the authors section. I then bring in the title of either the video or the paper or the blog, a URL to direct me back to the web page, website or wherever it was found, a Zotero link, which takes me to 
to the item inside of Zotero when I click this link. And all of this is a for loop that basically goes to Zotero, asks, is there an annotated note here? A highlight, an image box? Yes, bring it in, then add some links and stuff to it. Then do it again and again. And it, uh, and it keeps going until it's got all of the highlights. So now if I go to settings and hotkey, type in Zotero, you can see we've got some different commands. We've got the default import notes, which if you've extracted notes inside of Zotero, this will import them for you. But we want the import that we've just made, so I'm going to add a hotkey to that. Now you can still go through the command palette to get to the input, or you can use the hotkey, which I find is much easier. It will then bring up a Zotero window. It may be hidden in your taskbar if you don't see it straight away. It might be hidden for some reason, but this plugin only works if Zotero is active. Otherwise, it can't look for Zotero because Zotero is hidden. Now I'm searching for the paper. I can click on the paper, then push enter, fetching, extracting. There is the extracted note. You can see the image is in the images folder. We've got the year, we've got the tag note source. These were the two authors that Zotero grabbed. This is the URL, that's the PDF link back to Zotero. And then we've got a page one link. That was a yellow highlight. We have our box image showing in the page. And then we have a page two, and this is a red highlight. So if I click on page two, it's going to take me to the red highlight inside of the introduction section. And you can see there's the image highlight and there's the top highlight. If I was to then get rid of this highlight, so let's delete that highlight, come further down into the page and then add another highlight in here with a different color, call that green. I can then go back inside of my Obsidian page, do the same hotkey, find the same paper, push enter, and you can see what it's done is it's deleted that link at the top, that highlighted link at the top, and it's also added the other one that we added in down the bottom. So what it's done is essentially updated the import rather than adding a new import. And that is this setting in the Zotero integrations right here. This was a shorter video included in my extended brain course. This video went through the Obsidian plugin, Zotero integrations, but inside the course, it goes through more nuanced use cases, some other Zotero add-ons that I use, and some different workflow changes that I have in my nuanced workflow that you may be interested in. All the information is linked in the description below.